Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, March 3rd. I'm Wayne Pratt. Many coal-fired power plants have closed in Illinois over the past few years as utilities focus on other sources of energy. Communities are left to manage demolishing the buildings left behind, and they don't have to follow many rules. It's a transparency issue of like really understanding what does this process look like and and how can people protect themselves. If there's no process, there's no way for the community to know what's going to happen. In just a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt examines the regulations for coal power plant demolitions and why environmentalists are worried. Two women will run head-to-head to to be the mayor of St. Louis for the first time in the city's history. As St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Lippman reports, Treasurer Tashara Jones and Alderwoman Kara Spencer have secured spots in next month's general election. Tuesday's primary election was the first in which voters could choose as many candidates as they wanted. And Spencer says the results show the city wants to go in a new direction. What we see here tonight is a real embracing of a different vision for St. Louis, and I'm excited about that. Jones agrees that residents are demanding change. We need change in our city to ensure that regardless of any identity you hold, that you should be able to succeed here. Board of Aldermen President Lewis Reed, who came in third, has pledged to work with whoever wins the general election, especially on issues of public safety. I'm Rachel Lippman, St. Louis Public Radio. The fight over leadership of the St. Louis County Council is over. A judge has ruled Councilwoman Rita Days is the chairwoman. The court case centering on whether Days or Councilwoman Lisa Clancy should hold the position had been pending since January. St. Louis County Circuit Judge Thomas Albus has ruled Days is the chair since the vote to initially elect Clancy to the post was invalid. Days says she's ready to put the bitter legal fight behind her. I'm hoping that we can get back to the business of handling um, issues and challenges that are facing the residents of St. Louis County. So I'm pleased with the ruling, of course, and uh, looking to move forward. In a statement, Clancy says she considers the matter settled. The Missouri Supreme Court is not granting a new trial for a man who has spent 26 years behind bars for a murder he says he did not commit. The high court issued the ruling for Lamar Johnson, who was convicted in a 1994 killing. St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner has said she is duty-bound to correct what she believes was a wrongful conviction. Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt's office argued successfully that Gardner lacks the authority to seek a new trial so many years after the case was adjudicated. The Archdiocese of St. Louis calls the recently approved Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine, quote, morally compromised. It cites the use of a cell line from an aborted fetus. The Archdiocese has released a statement saying Catholics can receive the shot in, quote, good conscience if no other alternative is available. Jama Birth Village is receiving a $1 million grant from the pharmaceutical giant Merck. The grant will fund the training and mentorship of 360 new doulas, holistic caregivers who provide prenatal and postpartum support. Birth Village founder Kelly True Kelman says she became interested in maternal health because she had two unnecessary C-sections. It really landed me in a place to explore what does good maternal health care look like and what does it look like it particularly for black women. Kelman made those comments yesterday on St. Louis on the Air. The Birth Village wants to improve the black maternal mortality rate, which is three to four times higher than their white peers. More plants throughout Illinois will shut down as energy from coal falls out of favor. Half the 23 power stations in the state have already closed and are starting to be demolished. As St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports, environmentalists are worried because there are no clear rules for taking down old coal plants. 
Tony Oplett first noticed the Wood River Power Station in East Alton was being taken apart in the fall of 2019. The Edwardsville resident chairs the Metro East Green Alliance, a local group focused on environmental issues. She says she was curious about the demolition, but struggled to obtain details from the property's new owner, Commercial Liability Partners. Finally, after about the fifth email, I got a response. And that response said, we're doing everything we're supposed to do. Thank you very much. They would never meet with us. They would never talk to us. A spokesperson for Commercial Liability Partners says the company will follow all current safety regulations. Oplet's curiosity about the demolition here quickly turned into fear after another one of Illinois' shuttered coal power plants came down in April 2020. A smokestack implosion at the Crawford Coal Plant in Chicago shot a thick cloud of dust over the city's little village neighborhood, a working-class community mostly made up of Mexican and Central American immigrant families. Edith Tovar is a community organizer with the Little Village Environmental Justice Organization, or El Vejo. A lot of our departments within our city was reassuring us that, you know, all the right precautions were taken, yet there were zero water tanks on site to try to diminish the cloud of dust from traveling that far. Experts say that dust can carry mercury, arsenic, and other heavy metal byproducts that come from burning coal. Tovar says the demolition was traumatic for those around the neighborhood, especially because residents were already coping with the stress from coronavirus lockdowns. Just like Oplet, Tovar says El Vejo struggled to get information about the demolition, even as the plant was being taken apart. She says many of their questions remained unanswered afterward. We had nothing. The city of Chicago had nothing to really share with us. IEPA also had really nothing to share with us. Environmentalists saw what happened happened in Chicago and now worry the same kind of disaster could strike again at one of the many remaining facilities in the state. Half of Illinois' 23 coal-fired power plants have closed since 2009. Five more, including one southeast of St. Louis and Baldwin, are supposed to fully come offline this decade, and the remaining six are either shuttering some units or have no official retirement date. We're hitting this big transition moment. All these power plants are going to close. Andrew Rain is a civil engineer at Prairie Rivers Network, an organization that works on water, land, and pollution issues across Illinois. We just don't have a plan, and it's, it's coming across the state. Only three coal plants have seen demolition activity so far, according to a spokesperson at the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency. For the remaining plants, there aren't statewide rules for how a company must handle a demolition, besides meeting national emission standards for asbestos. Oplet says she learned this when contacting local officials and those at IEPA asking what regulations exist ahead of the Wood River Power Station demolition, which started last month. Not once could anyone ever definitively say, this company will have to be accountable. They were often pointing us back and forth, you know, at each other. Tovar says El Vejo's experience was similar, even after an environmental failure. There was this just pointing fingers and blaming whichever department had to sign off, right? And the matter of fact is that everyone is to blame for it when it came down to the botched implosion. There should be consequences. She says the developer there ended up being fined sixty. $68,000 by the city of Chicago and paid another $370,000 to settle a case brought by the Illinois Attorney General. These are all very low fines for a disaster that they caused. Most of Illinois' coal-fired power plants are in more rural areas away from cities, but there are some plants in metro areas like the Wood River Power Station whose smokestacks are still standing. They will come down after the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers finishes evaluating how their demolition might affect nearby levees. Oplet and Rain worry they'll release toxins into the air when they come down. Rain says all communities with a coal plant deserve to know they'll be safe when these power stations are eventually demolished. You know, it's a transparency issue of like really understanding what does this process look like and, and how can people protect themselves. If there's no process, there's no way for the community to know what's going to happen. He says more demolitions are inevitable, and without any regulations, more environmental problems are too. I'm Eric Schmidt, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com.